And I am the Roaring Roar and we're back with another design doll video and today I'm going to teach you how to do something that I've been wanting to learn how to do for a while and didn't know how to do. Design doll has been updating its interface over the last couple of years and a lot of things have been getting better lately and one of them is attaching objects to your model. There was definitely a way to do it before a lot of the updates but it wasn't very obvious when you were looking at it. Now it is, it's much simpler to understand but I've not seen a great deal of tutorials on how to do it so I'm going to show you all how to give any character any object and how to actually make it move with your character. So I've been playing about and experimenting with different things as you can see. I've been having a bit of fun. <laughs> Um, because often before when I was importing models and objects, you'll see with previous videos that when you import an object, often if I wanted it to do something with a character, I was operating it manually. So if I want, if I had the hand over here, I was then having a separate object for that model or like for the actual pickaxe right there, I would have to move it manually, move it around, which was a pain if all you did was like move the arm slightly and then you had to move the object a bunch. But now it's actually anchored to the character. And that's the same for, you know, the head. That's a mask and a hat on there. Easy peasy. And we have little wings on the feet. Again, they're all interactive. They all actually move with the character. And it's so simple to do. I'm going to show you three ways of how to do it. Now, the first one is going to be the easiest way in how to do it. And that is using the Doll Altier website once again. So we're going to go on to their website. Now, I've shown you this before. You go into the download section. They have all the models there. And I've gone to like mid-air models, um, like mid-air models, characters that are standing, fighting. Quite a lot of people have already uploaded like their own little figurines and things for in here. So we'll start off with a new one here. Let's go for, let me see, let me see, let me see. Because say you want a weapon that another character has. Now, say you've got your model all figured out. You know what you want your model to look like, but you need a weapon and you've spotted a weapon in here that you really do like. So for example, let's take this one. So we copy, so we're going to hide that, we're going to start off with something brand new and blank. File new. Okay, we now have a blank empty model to work with and I'll show you how I imported the current objects that I've got and how to import new ones as well. So I have my own model, but I want an object from a different model. Easy peasy. Paste, paste the date paste the DA number. Now we have the new model and it's marked down here so let's move it to the side. Now what you want to focus on right here is the import tag. It's the one that looks like a little paper clip. Focus on this little bit here. I can't remember this being here before on the older versions of Design Doll but it's so easy to use now. So right now that object is anchored to that character's hand. But if I wanted it in the other hand, there we go. And you can move that object around to suit yourself. So if you wanted it pointing a different direction, no problem. It will still stay anchored to that hand. But let's move it back there. Now, I want that in my model. Right click, copy, select your model, right click, paste, and then voila. Easy, peasy, lemon squeezy. That object is there and it automatically is anchored to that character. Now again, if you want to change the hand, just click on the import tag and you can move it around. Easy peasy weasy. So that's the first and easiest way to do this. Now let's look for something slightly more complicated, but not that complicated. So let's delete that just now and we shall reset the model. Now, I'm looking for something specific. 
So let's say I want to give my character a mask. I'm going to go to the website I find most reliable for low polygon items. Because remember, Design Doll can't handle anything with a high polygon rate. It's just not designed for it. If you try to import something with a high polygon, that means multiple faces. The more faces it has, Design Doll will just struggle with it and it will smooth it down and flatten it as much as possible. And it becomes very polygonal, basically. Just think of like indie games where everything is much more flat shaped. Now, this is the one that I like to use, which is free3d.com. That's really difficult to say for me sometimes. Free 3D. Free 3D. <laughs> Anywho. Now, you can look up anything here. Weapons. You're going to get loads. You know, if you're like me and you're skint, you don't have any money, you can look up the free ones. But, what, but the important part you need to look for is you're looking for OBJ. So that's object files. So we're going to select that. And then you want low polygon ones as well. Now you're looking for items such as this right here. Like, it's like this wee knife here. There's barely anything to that. It's very low polygon, about 10,000. You're kind of looking for the 10,000 and less range. Anything more than that, and Design Doll is going to smooth it out, or it's not even going to import it very well. So let's go back to the mask one that I had. Now, they're very easy to download. Click on it. You'll tap download, and it will give you a RAR file. Now, when you have that RAR file, It's going to bring up this. Now you do not need all of these different items. These are all different full these are all different file types for different programs, you know, 3DS, Blender, and such. You just need the OBJ. So all you would do is extract and extract it to a folder where you can find all of your 3D objects. Keep it nice and simple and easy to find. But that's all you need. Now we're going to go back into Design Doll. Now tap your model. Now look at this wee plus symbol over here, add tag, and you're looking for the import tag. Now we want to import something to the face, so we tap that, import mesh, and there's my mask, open. Now again this is going to be the scale factor here, don't worry about this right away, worry about it after you've imported, so apply. Now right now we can't really see the object, so let's pull it away. Now tiny wee thing there. Easy enough to fix, you're just going to scale and we're going to keep increasing that. Just click, hold and then keep moving your mouse to the sides until it gets to the size you want. Now, I'm just going to simply rotate that. Move that along. And there we go. Now you could change the shape of your model's face to fit that mask a little bit more. But now, say, but say again you want to go in and rotate it, you can't tap on the object itself. It's going to automatically go to your model. So you always have to tap the import tag. So let's rotate that a wee bit more so it fits the face. Now there we go. And again, as soon as you tap the model, that object is going to stay with your character, so you can move around, create any pose you want, and that item is going to stay there. Now, did you notice earlier that mine was a different colour? Easy thing to fix as well. Tap on the import tag, just go to set colour. My main colour, my shadow colour, and look at that! Creepy purple mask. Or my creepy character. Yeah. And that's when I just started playing around with different objects. Now, this is another important point. If you're going to have more than one um, than one object on your character, you need to do it with multiple tags. It's just not going to work otherwise. Because that import tag is for that object alone. It can't have multiple objects. So if you want to have another item, click your model, 
add the import tag. We're going to have it over there. Now let's have the axe, import mesh. And I have my pickaxe. Let's increase that quite a bunch. There we go. Rotating it around. So it fits the hand. And then you can come in and adjust your character's hand. So I want to move the model. Again, we're just moving that along. Up we go. And look at that. Easy peasy again. It's so handy now that you can do this it's with such ease. Because it now means you can start making the kind of characters that you want to see. If you need more specific characters with clothing and all sorts, it's going to be so much easier to do it now. You don't need strong skills in Blender. You don't need very expensive programs. You do not need programs that have a complicated interface. Right now, I'm trying to learn a bit of Blender. And learning the interface, it does take a while because there is so much to learn in that program. But gradually, bit by bit, I'm trying to learn how to do it. But here's the third way how. Here, now, here's the third way of adding objects to your character. It's not so much different from these two, to be honest. But three ways just looks better for a YouTube thumbnail. <laughs> but say you want something very specific for your character. You can't find the weapon you want, you can't find the mask you want, you can't find the clothing you want. You need something specific. Best thing to do then is look through these websites. Find people who are good at making models. If you are not very confident at making 3D objects yourself, there are so many people that know how to do it. You've got all these people here that know that understand how to create things, make textures, they can do so much for you. Now again, there's paid objects here, so you get a lot more clarity or you get a lot more variety when you start buying things. Go on to People Per Hour, go on to Fiverr, look up 3D Modeler. And when you are and if you are going to commission a modeler, explain what you need. So you need an OBJ file, and it needs to be low polygon, and give them examples. Show them the program that you're using, they could be familiar with it, but make it clear that you need objects to be very smooth, very flat. It's just to help give you some references. But on these websites themselves, th there's so much available that you can buy. And I, I just prefer Free 3D just because I really like their tagging system. I've found things a lot quicker on this website than I have other ones. But I'll show you a link to my previous... My pre but I'll give you a link to my previous video on importing objects for free. And I have a few more different examples of websites that you can use. But this is the one that I recommend quite a lot if you're looking for something quite specific. But there we go, guys. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. We have imported objects. We have attached them and anchored them to our character. Now you can go have fun and create something. Maybe create something a little more creepier than mine. I actually want to see that. If any of you follow my Twitter, please send me pictures. I, I want to see what kind of things you create with this program. I want to see how wild and funny you can get with creating your own characters. I want to see you learning this program. I want to see you having fun with it. So look me up on Roaring Rar on Twitter. I'll leave a link down below and we'll hashtag it something. What should we call the hashtag? What should we call the hashtag? We'll call it 3D RAR. Make it easy enough to find. Because like long hashtags no one will spell correctly. So we'll type, we'll call it 3D RAR. Hashtag 3D RAR. And then we can all see the fun things that we create together. So go have fun with that. Go create your weird little characters. Go find objects. Go support 3D artists. And show me what you guys have created with this program. I want to see what fun you've been having. Go enjoy yourselves. Bye. Thank you.